Hey guys, Carlson here to carry on uh, the Chapter 6 video lectures. Uh, this is part two of the skeletal system and we are going to pick up where we left off, which is at section 5. This talks about a problem that occurs as we get older, osteopenia. It is a natural thinning and weakening of the bone and that is the definition of osteopenia. Remember, penia means lacking, osteo bone. So uh, this reduction begins between years 30 and 40 because of the osteoclast activity continuing while the osteoblast activity declines. So we no longer have an adequate balance of ossification and therefore we have loss of bone. And uh, women lose about 8% every decade while men only lose 3%. Now, there is a difference between osteopenia and something you've probably heard of called osteoporosis. Osteopenia, remember, is natural, and it does not affect all parts of the body equally. It affects your epiphyses, causing fragile limbs, your vertebrae, causing a reduction in height, and then jaws, causing a loss of teeth, which we know that, generally speaking, uh, elderly people sometimes have to have dentures for that reason. So all that's considered normal. Osteoporosis is not normal because the rate of bone deposition is increased, uh, compromising normal function, and it's usually accelerated due to an imbalance in sex hormones. This just creates more fragility, uh, breaking bones more easily, and not repairing very well, which is why, why elderly people have to be very careful about not falling. Uh, hip breaks are very common in elderly people with osteoporosis for that reason. 6-6 uh, six, six talks about some distinguishing markings in the bones, kind of the anatomical landmarks of the skeletal system, and we're also going to break down the two skeletal divisions. So this table here is a good one for you to look at. It will help you remember all the bones when you are taking your bone quiz. Uh, just a few to note that are a uh, pretty popular uh, process is a projection or a bump. You have uh, spines, which are a pointed process, and there is one in the skull that you're going to be labeling. Uh, the crest is a prominent ridge, just like in your pelvic girdle. Here you have uh, several common terms or markings that are in, in any long bone, really, and these help us to move. And then you also have depressions and openings. Uh, you'll probably more commonly see uh, foramens, which look like a large hole, or, which are really a passageway for blood vessels or nerves. You have uh, sinuses, which are chambers within a bone that are normally filled with air, and there are lots of them in the face. Now, I'm not going to go through each and every one of these, but just kind of look at them, be aware, uh, take a look at this diagram that points out a lot of them visually, maybe even draw yourself a quick sketch. Uh, here are those sinuses of the face that I was talking about. You can see that there's quite a few of them. Um, here is a foramen or a large hole like I mentioned and here's that crest of that pelvic girdle that I was talking about that ridge so again if you if you know the markings uh, it's usually part of the name of the bone and then you can kind of visually see that bone when you're trying to remember what they are all right here are your two skeletal divisions again you have your axial skeleton which includes the skull uh, the thoracic cage and then the vertebral column with the sacrum and coccyx attached to it. Uh, we have our appendicular skeleton which is just everything else. You have your clavicle um, which is part of the pectoral girdle that attaches to your upper limbs or arms and then you have your pelvic girdle which attaches to your lower limbs or your legs. And we're going to talk about those in a little more detail here starting with the axial skeleton. The axial skeleton is going to support and protect your brain, spinal cord, and organs of the ventral body cavity. It also provides a surface for muscle to attach so we can move our heads, neck, and trunk. We can perform respiratory movements, and then we can also stabilize or position our appendicular skeleton with this uh, base, basically. Uh, the skull is going to protect our brain, guard the entrances to the digestive and respiratory systems, and provide some special organs for hearing, tasting, smelling, uh, balance, and sight. It's made up of 22 main bones, 8 in the cranium, and 14 in the face that you need to be familiar with. The skulls of infants and children are slightly different because we have to allow for the ability to be uh, born, so uh, the skulls are easily distorted because of those soft spots that I'm sure you've heard about, which are actually fibrous connective tissue called fontanelles. So these occur because the brain enlarges faster than the skull during embryonic development, and they will actually disappear by the age of four, reducing the number of composite bones over time. For example, um, your frontal bone is originally two and forms into one, and your occipital bone is normally four and forms into one. 
the other two parts of the axial skeleton are the vertebral column and the thoracic cage. Uh, the vertebral column is made up of your spine of 26 bones, the 24 vertebrae, the sacrum, and the coccyx. And uh, they're going to support, they're going to bear weight, transfer weight, and protect the spinal cord and help us maintain our body position whether we're sitting or standing. And then the thoracic cage is basically our chest containing our ribs, vertebrae, and sternum. And they will protect our heart and lungs and provide a base for muscles involved with respiration. And we have a picture of both the vertebral column and thoracic cage here. Just some quick things to note, there are four regions of the vertebrae. So you have your cervical, and note that there's a symbol with the first letter and the number of that vertebrae. You have the thoracic, which is your rib cage area, lumbar, lower back, and the sacral region, um, kind of in that pelvic girdle area. So if you ever heard anybody say, oh, I have a C4 spinal injury, they're talking about specifically in that C4 vertebrae. Special note about your thoracic cage, just make sure you can see that the true ribs here are actually connected to the sternum, while the false ribs are connected to the lower ribs uh, included in that true rib category. And then of course you also have your floating ribs which are a part of those false ribs that are in the back and they kind of consider them floating because that's kind of what they appear to be doing. All right, now our appendicular skeleton uh, helps connect our limbs to our trunk, and they do this by forming joints or, or articulating. Uh, those upper limbs are attached to the pictorial girdle, where the clavicle articulates with the sternum, and this is the only direct connection. The upper limbs include the arm, forearm, wrist, and hand, and when we say arm, we're talking about the proximal portion of the upper limb, which is known as the humerus, anatomically. Those lower limbs are going to include the uh, pelvic girdle attaching to the thigh bones, which are more massive bones due to the weight-bearing stresses and locomotion they provide. So your lower limbs include your femur, your patella, your tibia and fibula, and then the bones of the ankle and foot. Now just a special note, your femur is the longest and heaviest bone in your body, again for those weight-bearing stresses. Here is a picture of your upper limb, which again includes your humerus, and then your radius and ulna are your forearm. Uh, it might be helpful to remember that your radius is on the thumb side and has that larger uh, styloid process than the ulna does. Here is your hand. Make sure, I'm not going to have you remember all the carpals, but make sure you can say, okay, the, the wrist bones are the carpals, uh, these are the metacarpals, and your phalanges are made up of a proximal, middle, and distal uh, parts. Here is your lower limbs, made up of the femur, your tibia and fibula, and, I'm sorry, fibula and tibia. Tibia is the larger or your shin bone. And then, of course, you have your ankle and foot. Again, all these ankle bones are considered your tarsals. You have your metal, metatarsals in the middle and then your phalanges on the end, which, again, also include a proximal, middle, and distal part to them. And that is the last part of our notes. Uh, part three will be due after break and just cover a few more sections that have to do with joints and articulation. I know I talk kind of fast, so feel free to go back and pause and play as you like, and I'll see you guys next time.